It's quite common to see people out there spending more than they earn without realizing the consequences of this habit. Surely you know someone close who lives a lifestyle that doesn't match their income. Sometimes, this person doesn't even know how much they spent last month and is always in debt. Nevertheless, they keep spending more and more. Today, I'm going to talk about what you can do to break out of this cycle, changing the way you handle your money, using concepts from great masters of personal finance. Let's imagine the following situation. You've already paid all your bills for the month and reached the end with no money left because you spent it all. You're just waiting for the next month to receive again. But because it was your birthday, you received a gift from family members worth $500. In this situation, which path would you follow? Would you take the $500 and spend it on whatever you want, like clothes, drinks, restaurants, or anything else you enjoy doing? Or would you choose to set aside a portion of that money to save and invest in something, only enjoying a small part of that money? After all, it's extra money you didn't count on. Through this example, I've explained the definition of assets and liabilities as described in Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Simply put, assets are anything that puts money in your pocket. So if you were to set aside $300 of those $500 to invest, even if it's in fixed income yielding 1% per month, you would already be far ahead financially compared to people who spend that money on frivolous things, taking it out of their own pockets. Basically, when you set aside money to invest, you're showing a certain financial education, a wealth mindset, as discussed in some personal finance books. This concept of assets and liabilities reflects well the idea of understanding where our money is going. If we're directing it only towards liabilities, like unnecessary purchases, multiple unnecessary credit cards, installments, we'll hardly achieve financial freedom and financial success. That's why we need to understand the difference between liabilities and assets to buy more and more assets and fewer liabilities. Assets can be shares of good companies capable of generating frequent returns, real estate funds where you receive monthly rents, or even buying your own property for rental, generating monthly income through rents. Even if you have little money, you can start investing. As we've discussed in other videos on this channel, there are many stocks and options that allow you to start with little money, and over time you can make contributions or use the compounded interest from your profit to reinvest. But okay, now that you understand about liabilities and assets, how should you go about buying assets instead of liabilities? The book, The Richest Man in Babylon, presents a crucial concept that everyone who wants to start investing should keep in mind and follow methodically. Pay attention to this. It's important to cultivate the habit of, as soon as you receive any money, setting aside at least 10% to invest in something you understand. But maybe you're thinking, oh, but I don't understand anything about any kind of investment. Relax. If you're just starting out in this world of investments, at this initial moment, focus only on setting aside these 10% every month, preferably in a different account from yours. So start researching investments, buying books, reading about it, and getting familiar with this world, taking the first steps as soon as possible. And you can binge watch this playlist that just popped up for you. It has many videos teaching you everything you need to know to start investing. And the best part, completely free. Because it's like the concept addressed in the book, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. If your goal is to accumulate more money, you shouldn't focus only on earning more, but also on spending less to invest the money that wasn't spent. For some people accustomed to spending all they earn, simply the habit of saving a portion every month is already a great advancement. However, investing is extremely important, especially in the long term. You'll understand better what I'm talking about when you see this chart. The blue color represents how much you have invested, and the yellow color is the return on your money, interest only. Applying an initial $1,000 at a rate of 6% per year something quite common in many investments today, we see that in the first six years, the main focus is on saving to invest, as the interest income is practically insignificant. However, when we look at a 30-year period, we understand the dimension that compounded interest has taken over time. Therefore, the sooner you start investing, the better, to make the most of the effect of compounded interest over time. 
Another common thing is hearing about salaries, how much each person earns, who earns more or less, but rarely do we talk about the difference between income and wealth. And you'll understand this with the following hypothetical example. Emma has a great job and earns $20,000 every month, meaning her income is $20,000. On the other hand, Sarah earns $5,000 monthly, so her income is $5,000. But the wealth issue changes the game. Emma, even though she earns $20,000 a month, spends all her income monthly, leaving nothing at the end of the month and having no assets, as she doesn't own any assets. All the money is spent on liabilities. Meanwhile, Sarah, even though she earns less than Emma, has the habit of investing $2,000 every month and living on the remaining $3,000 of her salary. Keeping this up over five years, even without her money earning anything, with a 0% interest rate, Sarah will have a net worth of $120,000, while Emma will continue without any assets or even accumulating debts and ending up in the negative. You might be thinking, oh, but Emma at least enjoys life. Well, it's not quite how things work. Emma's situation is complicated. She may enjoy some moments by buying things she likes, but only she knows about the credit card she's in debt to, the bills she doesn't know how to pay, and the loans she took out without any planning. In other words, we do need to enjoy ourselves and buy what we like, but we have to do it with financial intelligence, always leaving a considerable portion to build our wealth, just like Sarah did, who did it the right way. Because as mentioned in the book Financial Psychology, one of the main things money can provide us with is flexibility. For example, Sarah, having $120,000 in her account, if she gets fired from her job, she can choose a job that pays the same salary or even more, having the option to choose because she has enough money to comfortably go without a job for a few months, without worrying about bills. She acquired a certain flexibility. But if this happens to Emma, for example, the panic will be great because her standard of living is $20,000 per month. The bills will also be that amount next month and she will have to find a job as good as the previous one as quickly as possible. So, in addition to the money you're saving to invest, set aside a small part of your salary for financial education, as mentioned in the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, by T. Harv Eker. Because that way, you'll learn better how to manage and organize your personal finances. As the book also mentions, if you want to be financially successful, you should focus on earning your money, your salary, for example, and conserve as much of that money as possible to invest and multiply over time. Now. Someone who lacks financial education and, as the book itself says, has a poor mindset, only focuses on receiving money and spending it all, living like this every month, like Emma's example. She earns much more than Sarah and still has the poor mindset of spending everything and not knowing how to use the money in the best way. Whereas a rich mindset means thinking long term, focusing on simplifying life in the present moment, controlling some expenses and living more balanced to be able to invest more every month so that in the future you can live off the fruits of these investments, that is, the returns. And you, do you tend to be like Emma or like Sarah? Take a moment to reflect and if you're making the same mistakes as Emma, it's not too late to fix them. Use the knowledge provided in today's video. I'm sure that in no time, you'll be in a much better situation. That was our video for today. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Time to Invest. Thank you for watching this far. See you on Friday.